everyone. My name is Jamie, and I'm a developer advocate for a serverless platform company called Nimbella. So during the, if you were here for the previous webinar for the Cloud Novice or Cloud Native, we went over quite a bit of things. We went over the basics of serverless technology. We went over um, what serverless functions are, how to actually interact with them with the Nimbella workspace. And we even went over discussing how you would actually get an, an app deployed using the cloud, but we kind of went over just the basics of it. In this webinar, I want to go ahead and go a bit deeper discussing the demo projects that we have and kind of so that you can have a better understanding of how the demo projects work and how you can use them to as, as uh, tips to be able to build your own applications. So to give you an idea what to expect for the rest of this webinar, so most of the projects I'm gonna go over are in React, minus one that is in Python, but regardless of whether or not like you know you are either with both of those languages or you program in another language, the things I'm gonna be going over are fairly universal. So don't stress too much if you're not familiar with either of those languages. I'll, but speaking of React, I will go over um, um, how you would organize your applications if you're building in React. And I will also be discussing YAML files. So if you don't know what a YAML file is, it is used for configuration, but I do wanna make it very clear that you don't always need a YAML file in order to actually be able to launch an application to the cloud using Nimbella. Uh, we have a system where we deal with a no configuration setup to where you don't always have to do that, but I will be showcasing examples of when YAML files can be useful if you want a little bit more versatility in what you're gonna be deploying. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So to get started, just go to Nimbella and log in. So as you probably remember from the last time that we went through this, this is the main page where you log in, where you can get your login key for your domain we got our demo projects here and how you deploy them and even have the area where you would install the CLI to make your environment um, accessible to the cloud. So, so the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is that assuming that you've um, never, assuming you've never done this before, all you'd have to do is go ahead and run this command to be able to log into your domain in the cloud. So you just copy this command right here and then you paste it into your command prompt. Once you're logged into your domain, let's go ahead and actually download the demo projects. So to download the demo projects, you would just click this link right here and you would just run this get clone command to be able to actually uh, run them. If for whatever reason you don't have git on your computer, just copy this link right here, paste it in, and you'll be able to download a zip file so that you'll still have access to it. But personally, I would recommend getting Git because you know uh, GitHub has saved my life with programming more than once. All right. So I'm personally not going to run this command because I already have it saved. But if you don't have this, I would recommend doing it. So the CD in here. So to deploy a project, all you have to do is type in nim project deploy and then the name of the project. If I was outside of the demo projects folder, I would do nim project deploy demo projects backslash calculator. Okay. So while this, deploy, this is deploying, I'm gonna go over some of the things that are popping up here to explain exactly what's going on. So it's confirming that it's going to my namespace, which is the, this little text right here. It's being attached to the host. It understands that it needs to run npm install production in order to run this function that we have in this folder right here. And it has these two pop-ups. So these two pop-ups right here, I'm going to go and explain them a little bit. Let's say I did not have any web content at all, and I just had the actual functionality inside of the actions folder. If that was just the case, then I would only get this, and it would be just saying, hey, you just deployed actions and nothing else. But because I'm actually incorporating a front end to this, 
it gives me this URL so that I'm able to actually interact with the front end. So to interact with this application, just copy this link, paste it in, and you'll see that we have a very basic calculator. So to go ahead and just test it out, just do like one plus four or whatever type of math equation you wanna do. And it only gives me the result, but it also tells me something interesting where it says it's been served 72 times. So here's what that means. Uh, this right here means that either I alone have ran the 72 times or um, me and anyone else who had this link collectively ran it 72 times. So what's cool about this app that, yeah, even though it is a very basic, this is actually an example of a stateful application that you can run. And in this application, let's see. So I wanna go ahead and actually show how you would run this application, or wanna go ahead and show the code itself so you have an idea of what's going on under the hood. So to get an understanding of how the code works, just go ahead and go to the um, demo projects folder with Nimbella and check out the application. So to go here, go to calculator. And we have two project folders right here. So we have a web folder and we have a projects folder. So our packages folder. This right here is where we would keep the static web content of the application itself, such as the HTML page. And right here is where we keep our actions. So we only have one action, which is just the eval. So we do that. But you'll notice here is that in this folder, uh, we do not have a YAML file. And that's because we don't need one. I'm, you know, I'm perfectly happy with the functionality of the action itself. I don't want to manipulate it in any special way. So I'm just going to keep it as is. And I'm going to let the, the uh, Nimbella's cloud deployer deal with the configuration on its own while I don't have to worry about that. So something I want to highlight here about this project, because I did mention before that this is stateful. And if you don't know what stateful means, what it means is that I'm able to keep track of the state. So I was able to configure like how many times I was able to actually interact or me or someone else was able to interact with the application to see um, how many people actually ran it. And to do that is actually really simple. All you got to do is you got to require right here, got to require NIM, which of course is you know from Nimbella. And then you have to import uh, Redis. So Redis, if you, if you don't know what this is, it is a key value storage. So all I'm doing here is that I'm telling Redis, hey, take, the, take this key and update the value and return it. That way, I'm able to keep track of that particular state for this application. And of course, I got this command right here that takes in the text, you know, converts it into a number, and then displays the result of that of my math calculation. So it'll be doing it'll be doing side by side of the two of the of both um, the result and the state of the site itself. And actually calling upon this functionality is pretty straightforward. So right here, if you're curious, how do you actually call it? So we are calling it locally. So this command right here is just saying, hey, go to this folder, return some JSON. And that's how we're going to be interacting with the uh, function itself. All right. So now that you've seen a more basic project itself uh, that does not include a YAML file, let's see an example of a YAML file and how it can be beneficial. So to do that, I want to go ahead and check out our OCR application. And if I wanted to do that, all I'd have to do is type in nim project deploy OCR. And um, I could do that, but I want to go ahead and just kind of showcase it in a different way. So to do that, just go to numbella.com. And you'll see that our example applications for our stateful applications are actually available on our front page. To see what it's like to interact with this application as a customer for it and not like the person who owns it, you can just click on it and you can take a look at it. All right. So this is our this is our OCR app. I'm going to show you real quick how it works. So I have these two test images right here. So I got one that just says this is a test. 
And I got another that says, uh, you added two images. So you can add in multiple images at the same time. It will recognize the text of both. And you probably cannot hear that, but what it's actually doing is that it found the text. And when you click speak, it was actually able to say out loud what was written on the text. So that's pretty much the basics of it. So we can go ahead and take a look to get a bit better idea of what's going on in the back end. All right. OK. So this right here is actually a React app. And I've, I'm really glad that I want to showcase this one because I've had a few React developers talk to me and say, OK, well, you know, I know how to code locally with a React app and create it, you know, with MPX create React app, you know, give it the name. But I don't exactly understand how the structure would work if I'm trying to put it into a project template. So here's how you would do that if you were building a React app sim you know, similar to this OCR app. If you were to, so all you'd have to do is first you would create a template. So I would run um, nim project create uh, test three the project test three. And CD into it. And you'll see that when you create a template, you get two things. You get a packages folder where you add your actions. And then of course you got your web folder where you put your static assets. So all you have to do is just delete this web folder right here and then type in MPX create react app and then give it the name web. And once your React app has been finalized and it's available, you can be able to code within that React app in the exact same way you normally would. Only difference is, is that if you, know, if you have some type of um, serverless functions, you would call upon them inside of this package folder. And that's pretty much the entirety of how you would deal with that. So, all right. So for here, all right, so I really like this one because I want to go ahead and showcase something real quick. If you scroll at the bottom on this readme, you'll see that we actually have five different actions uh, inside the packages folder that all do different things. It accepts the images, checks its credentials, does image to text, checks the progress, and it does text to speech. So depending on how you're interacting with it, with it one of these five is being triggered. But I do want to go ahead and showcase this YAML file because I want to point out something interesting about it where, so with this YAML file right here, uh, we have, um, we're only calling upon one action, which is image to text. And that's because um, for that particular function, I want to be able to manipulate it in a very particular way. So for here, all we got to do is, you know, all I'm doing is just, you know, changing the runtime and I'm also adding limits to it. So the limits, I have the, um, uh, the limits to the memory I'm adding to it. And I'm actually doing a timeout. So this is milliseconds. And here, I'm just adding like about two minutes worth of milliseconds. And the cool thing about this project is that, you know, even though I'm dealing with five functions in total, I only got to, you know, deal with one configuration because I have very special needs for that specific one. So that's a pretty good example of um, when a YAML file can be useful. Now, all right. Now I wanna go ahead and show one other React project that I think is a pretty good as far as understanding like how YAML files and React projects can work together pretty well. And that is the stock trading app. So to go to the stock trading app, all you do is go to nabella.com Scroll to the middle and you can click this link right here to see what it would be like to interact with a stock trading app as if you were a customer. Okay, so that's loaded up. So what's interesting about this app, you'll notice right here, um, you know, this isn't mine. Like this is not my code right here. This is actually being deployed on someone else's cloud, but it was able to tell that, hey, this is Jamie that's coming back to this page. And the last time specifically Jamie came, he interacted with these stocks. Oh, and I do want to mention something, by the way. Um, this is a dummy app. 
we're not dealing with actual real money here. You're just interacting with like fake money and fake stocks. So, you know, I've, I'm not actually dealing with, you know, nearly $9,000 worth of cash right now for this demo app. So, you know, just wanted to point that out in case you were worried about, hey, are they going to be actually dealing with my real money on this app? Now, this is just an example. So if I want to go ahead and I only have two stocks in Netflix. So if I wanted to go ahead and sell it, just go ahead and select the only one. It knows that it's the only one I got. And it knows I only have two stocks, so it won't let me go any further than that. I can sell them, and that's it. So that's overall how this app works as far as like, you know, a, Re a stateful React, React app. But I want to, and now I want to go ahead and take a deeper look into the code. So if you want to take a look at that code and see what's going on, you can just go to the trade folder right here. Okay. So we, as usual, got our packages folder, got our web folder, which is our React folder right here, which is called web. And um, the one, another reason why I actually wanted to um, just check this out on the website and not deploy it on my own personal cloud is because there's actually like a handful of steps that are involved in getting this application properly set up. And I like this because this is actually a really good project to understand how you would take care of API tokens. So for this project to properly work when you deploy it, you need to actually go to iexcloud.io to um, use their service to get an API token to be able to uh, get the stock information that you'll be interacting with. Now, and of course, you know, if you're getting an API token, you want to be able to keep that API token a secret. So here's a nice way to do that with a YAML file. So with this YAML file, you'll notice that uh, we were calling upon the packages and the folder called trade demo. But with the parameters, uh, we are passing in the API token and we're giving it this encrypted area right here. So this right here is, this right here is just the names, um, the variable name for the API token that we're giving it. And despite the fact that we you know we have um, seven functions inside that, inside it, you know, we don't have to really configure anything else with those seven functions. We can just pass this in and it'll know to pass in that API token. So how would you do that properly? Well, one of the things you could do is that you could actually enter, you could create a .ien file. And what that can do is that you take that dot, uh, dot .environment file, you add your API token to it so that when you deploy it to the cloud, uh, that variable is actually stored securely into your cloud. And then that, and then you can just be able to call upon that stored thing uh, through a variable name inside of your YAML file. So that's a good way to create API tokens, keep them secure, and making sure that, you know, like if you got, got this going on, you don't have to keep that information public. All right. So now that we've gone over the structure and some projects and all that, I want to go ahead and kind of wrap this pr um, presentation up by discussing some tips and tricks to be able to speed up the process of creating applications with Nimbella and deploying. So to do that, just go to nimbella.io. You'll be redirected to this page. Scroll down to the bottom and then click on Nimbella CLI documentation. So this is going to be a really important document if you're going to be building applications on the cloud because it pretty much just goes over everything that you'll need in order to start um, deploying code to the cloud. So if you need like a refresher on actions, you can scroll to the bottom here and click about actions. And it will give you information about, you know, like if you if you just needed to create a serverless function, it will show you how, how to make it and it will even tell you how to get the URL inside of your command prompt so that you'll be able to paste it into your browser and test it out. Let's see here, you can also check out a few other things that I wanna go ahead and talk. You can also talk about web content. And um, let's see, let's go over a few tips I wanna go ahead and cover. So. So going back to, hmm, sorry, the page isn't wanting to load all the way. Give me one sec.
All right. There we go. So something I wanted to show you real quick, going back to YAML files. So let's. So as I stated before, you don't always necessarily need a YAML file to be able to deploy applications to the cloud. But if you know if you do feel that you need a YAML file to make very special um, settings for the different actions you're going to be dealing with, you can actually um, generate a YAML file when you type in nim project create and give it the name and then just give it the flag minus minus config. And what this will do is that this will generate a template that you can use to start um, updating the actual YAML file itself. And if there's things that you don't need, you can just go ahead and erase them or if things you wanna add, you can do, you can go ahead and add them. This is a nice way to just get started if you absolutely need a YAML file. Another thing I wanna talk about as far as speeding up the process goes is the, um, increment, is the increment tag. Let's see if I can go ahead and find it real quick. There we go. Deploying your projects incrementally. Okay, so, so going back to one of the, the calculator project itself, it's a pretty simple project. You know, it's just it's one action and one web content. So no, not so if you had to run nim project deploy and then deploy the entire project over and over again, it wouldn't really take that long or that much time because it's such a small project. But the problem is, is that if you are building a pretty massive project, that you know that can actually take a whole lot of time. You know, for example, if you got like 20 or more uh, functions, maybe you don't want to deploy every single one. So let's say, for example, you have 20 functions, but you only updated two functions. Well, if you only wanted to push those two changes uh, to the cloud itself, all you'd have to do is add the incremental flag to the application, it's to the um, to the command itself, and it'll know, okay, I see that you only did two changes, so I'm only going to process these two changes. This is going to save you a ton of time if you're dealing with really big projects and you don't want to have to deploy the entire project every single time. All right, so one final trick I want to go ahead and show you as far as as far as uh, getting everything set up goes. Let's see. All right. The last one I want to go over is the the watch flag. So let's say you don't want to run the incremental flag every single time you want to deploy. And you kind of want this, uh, you want to just to update automatically as you're coding and saving along. Well, that's where the watch flag comes in. So what you could do is you could type in nim project watch and give it the project name. And what this will do is that Nimbella will understand that it needs to be watching the project at all times while you're coding to see the changes you're doing as you save along, and it will push those push those changes to the cloud. So that's not another really great way to be able to speed up the process of building your applications. All right. Okay. So that is the end of Cloud Novice to Cloud Native number two. I want to thank everyone who participated and decided to ch check this out. If you have any sort of, uh, if you yourself are building an application, I invite you to join our uh, community Slack channel by checking out nimbella.com slash Slack. You, from there, you can share what you're working on, or you can ask any questions about any type of application you're building, and, and you can talk to the entire team, and we'd be happy to help you out. Also, something else I want to mention, uh, if you would like to use the pro version of uh, the Numbella serverless platform, you can. Right now, our, you know, our serverless platform is free, but if you want to upgrade to the pro tier, feel free to fill out the, uh, follow this link to fill out this form, and we'll be happy to get you set up with that. Well, other than that, uh, my name is Jamie, and thank you so much for joining us for today, and I hope you have a great rest of the day.